why do we still protest in the streets when we can just complain on social media? In this part of Rethink the City, we will discuss the role of public space in spatial justice. In particular, we will focus on the role of public space in providing a political platform for societal demands. Freedom of expression is one of the pillars of democracy. According to John Parkinson, a political scientist who researched spaces of democracy, physical public spaces play an important role for the people to express their grievances and demands. This includes street protests as well. Street protests are a tactical form of dissent involving symbolic occupation of public space. Sometimes they may be sanctioned by the authorities, and at other times they may be illegal. But they are always a tangible expression of citizens' claim. By bringing their persons into the public space, sometimes peacefully, other times violently, demonstrators make a political claim over space. Teresa Hoskins reminds us that public space expresses democratic ideals found in the relationship between public sphere and public realm. Public sphere is the political dimension of social life, while public realm here refers to public institutions. Today, I'm going to talk about the interrelation between digital media and physical spaces in contemporary societies, focusing on social media as a tool for demonstrations. Digital media actually reinforces the need for physical spaces for protest. I will use the case of the Bursa movement in Malaysia to help me illustrate my points. In August 2015, a mass demonstration was held over two days in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Organized by Bursa, the protest demanded action from the government over a controversial financial scandal involving public money. Bursa is a civil society movement constituted by a coalition of NGOs whose main goal is electoral reform. Bursa's rallies always have specific demands targeting different aspects of the electoral processes. Bursa intended to occupy the historic Dataran Merdeka, the biggest public square in Kuala Lumpur, but the city hall declined the request. Other spaces were offered by the authorities, mostly in stadiums far away from the city centre. Since the point of street protest is to broadcast grievances to the public and the authorities, the place where it happens matters a lot and could make or break the protest. The second Bersih protest took place in 2011. Drawing an even bigger crowd after the first Bersih in 2007, social media was credited for making it possible. Since then, there seems to be an explosion of protest movements in Malaysia, and most of them would have a digital presence long before they take to the streets. It's all too easy to ignore views you don't like on social media. You can either mute, unfollow, hide, unfriend, or block someone whose views you disagree with. But it's a bit harder to ignore a large group of people acting in concert with each other on the streets, especially when the political demand is very serious. Social media is made up of networks of people, and it is through these networks that ideas get transferred. The affordances of social media allow ideas and information to be transmitted in no time to a large group of people. This is why social media is great for street protests, since the cost of disseminating information and mobilization is very low. A large group of people could be assembled in a very short period. What happens on the streets are then recorded and transmitted back in both social media and mainstream media. So, even though a protest may start its life online, it is crucial that it flows into the streets, since images of people coming together to express their shared grievances in the public space are very powerful. Without these images taking hold of our imagination, it is very difficult for protests to leave any lasting impact, especially now with so much information vying for our short attention span. Therefore, the digital media is also dependent on these images being produced in the physical public space to be broadcasted and amplified over and over again. But of course, for the image to be powerful, the setting must be right. This is why Bersih takes place in central Kuala Lumpur every time, even though the seat of government is elsewhere. The government of Malaysia moved to the newly built administrative capital, Putrajaya, already in 1999. If spatial justice is about the right to the city, 
then it's very easy to see why protests are held in Kuala Lumpur instead of Trajaya. Since Kuala Lumpur is the biggest city in Malaysia and concentrates most of its cultural, educational and financial institutions, Central Kuala Lumpur is a very symbolic, iconic place, easily recognizable by anyone in Malaysia. Putrajaya, on the other hand, only has government institutions and not easy to access by public transportation. From my conversations with protesters and activists, the spaces that they use for protests is no different from the spaces of everyday life. Kuala Lumpur is the, is the preferred place for protests because the infrastructure of everyday life also supports street protests. This shows that the citizen's political space is no different from the spaces we use in everyday life. Since the federal government of Malaysia is no longer in Kuala Lumpur, Bersih's rallies Bersih relies heavily on the media to broadcast and amplify the protest. In order to create impressive images that will leave an impact, Kuala Lumpur, with its narrow colonial streets and historical importance, provides a much better setting for this performance of public claim making. From this example, we can see how access to public space for expression of political claims is crucial. Access is not just direct permission or denial. In the case of Putrajaya, we can see that the lack of infrastructure can also severely limit access and disable certain kinds of political actions. This is because, according to Graham and McFarlane, infrastructure enables and disables certain kinds of action to take place in the city. Freedom of expression is a democratic right. Therefore, access to public space to express this content is an important component of spatial justice. Spatial justice is about ensuring these kinds of actions necessary for a healthy democracy could take place. Social media is useful only to a certain extent, but it can never replace the occupation of physical public space.